In this video, we're going to talk about how night vision image intensifier tubes protect themselves against bright light sources. However, in order to do that, we need to first talk about how night vision image intensifier tubes work. Now, we're going to be skipping over Gen 0 and Gen 1 devices because those devices typically do not have any high light protection mechanism. The typical Gen 0 and Gen 1 tube only really has two basic components, the photocathode and the phosphor screen. The typical Gen 0 and Gen 1 device also has a simple power supply that just feeds a consistent 18 kilovolts to the tube. The typical Gen 0 and Gen 1 device also has no means of detecting increases in light levels, nor any means of altering the power supply to the tube. Hence, the average Gen 0 and Gen 1 device really has no means of protecting the tube in cases of high light exposure. Gen 2 and 3 tubes, on the other hand, have the addition of a microchannel plate as well as sophisticated power supplies built into the tube that can vary the voltages supplied to the photocathode and the microchannel plate. The ability to alter these voltages is crucial to tube protection mechanisms, as we will discuss later. Now, onto how Gen 2 and 3 tubes work. All Gen 2 and 3 tubes have three basic components. A photocathode, a microchannel plate, and a phosphor screen. When ambient light photons hit the negatively charged photocathode, the photocathode will release electrons into the tube. These electrons then hit the negatively charged microchannel plate, which releases even more electrons into the tube. These multiplied electrons then hit the phosphor screen, which releases photons in response, creating a visible image. Moreover, when electrons hit the phosphor screen, it generates a current that can be measured by the tube's power supply. When light levels are low, few electrons will reach the phosphor screen, and hence the current measurement will be low. However, if light levels are high, then the amount of electrons reaching the phosphor screen will increase, and hence the current measurement will increase with it. This is basically how tubes are able to tell if they're in the pitch black, or if they're in a room with the lights on. In general, tube power supplies are configured with a maximum screen amperage or brightness that they can allow. If light levels increase and the screen amperage starts to exceed the maximum allowed set point, then the tube will start to kick in the multiple tube protection mechanisms that are available to prevent damage to the microchannel plate and the phosphor screen, both of which are susceptible to damage or burns that can be caused by excessive amounts of electrons. Now, onto the tube protection mechanisms themselves. There are four key mechanisms that allow Gen 2 and 3 tubes to protect themselves against excessive light exposure. These four mechanisms are the following. Automatic gain control, also called automatic brightness control, bright source protection, auto gating, and highlight cutoff. Pretty much all Gen 2 and 3 tubes, even the very early Gen 2 tubes, will have automatic gain control. When the screen brightness starts exceeding the maximum, automatic gain control will reduce the voltage to the microchannel plate. This hence lowers the gain, and reduces the amount of electrons that gets released by the microchannel plate and reach the phosphor screen. However, automatic gain control can only go so far. If light levels continue to increase, then bright source protection will kick in. Bright source protection lowers the voltage to the photocathode and hence reduces the amount of electrons that get released into the tube in the first place. Bright source protection is also a mechanism that can be found on even the earliest Gen 2 tubes and they also allow modern Gen 2 Plus tubes to be incredibly resilient to highlight exposure. The following footage were taken through Chinese NNVT Gen 2 Plus tubes, which have incredibly robust bright source protection that allows them to stay on, even in rooms where their lights were switched on. However, bright source protection does have its drawbacks. Because it is reducing the voltage to the photocathode, it also reduces the photocathode sensitivity. This reduces the tube's contrast and resolution and can result in a single point light source completely washing out a tube image. This brings us to our next protection mechanism, auto gating. In general, auto gating is found exclusively on modern Gen 2 Plus and Gen 3 tubes. While they may not be as robust as bright source protection for protecting tubes from extreme light exposure, auto gating does help the tube maintain image quality even in high light conditions. While bright source protection protects a tube by reducing the voltage to the photocathode, auto gating rapidly switches the photocathode on and off, 
without lowering the photocathode voltage. During the on cycle, the photocathode remains negatively charged and will continue to release electrons into the tube. However, during the off cycle, the photocathode becomes positively charged and will no longer release any electrons into the tube. Auto gating rapidly cycles the tube between these on and off modes thousands of times a second. This reduces the overall flux of electrons that passes through the tube, hence protecting its components from damage and burn, while allowing the tube to maintain a high photocathode voltage. This keeps the instantaneous photocathode sensitivity high and improves the tube's resolution, contrast, and dynamic range in high light environments. It is a common misconception that you need auto gating in order for a tube to protect itself. However, this is simply not true. Oftentimes, bright source protection alone is sufficient to protect modern Gen 2 Plus tubes against even extremes of bright light exposure. What auto gating can do that bright source protection can't is that it allows the tube to maintain its image quality even in high light environments. However, there comes a point that light levels can get so extreme that all the aforementioned mechanisms won't be able to protect the tube sufficiently. In this case, some tubes, especially modern Russian Gen 2 Plus and Gen 3 tubes, come with a high light cutoff mechanism. In general, high light cutoff mechanisms kick in when photocathode and microchannel plate voltages have been lowered to their minimum, yet the detected light levels continue to increase, then the tube power supply will cut power to all tube components until it's switched off and back on again.